Hello and welcome to this first um, film in a series of six about kinetic theory. Um, this first one deals with the three states of matter, that's solids, liquids and gases, and hopefully by the end of this film you'll understand how the particles are arranged in those substances, if you don't already know that, quite a lot of you will, and to consider how the physical properties of the three states of matter are related to the arrangement of particles. We're going to start off here by looking at the particles themselves and we're going to start looking at this thing called kinetic theory which is a theory to do with how the particles in substances actually behave okay and some key ideas of the kinetic theory are listed here okay that is that the particles are in constant motion right this is, this is something that physics forbids okay but it's kind of an approximation that we make for this theory Okay, it says that the particles are in constant motion. That means that when they bump into things, the collisions are perfectly elastic. They don't lose any energy in the collisions. Okay, second thing is really, really important, but people forget it and um, end up getting questions wrong as a result because it actually underpins quite a lot of other stuff. The kinetic energy of the particles defines the temperature that they're at. Okay, so two substances at the same temperature will have the same average kinetic energy. That's a really important thing. Okay, there are forces of attraction between the particles. Um, why would we assume that? Well, I suppose if there weren't any, then um, these particles that were moving around in liquids and solids would just fly apart and we'd never have any liquids and solids. And um, finally, that the particles themselves are very, very small and can't be compressed. That's not to say the substances can't be uh, compressed, but the particles themselves can't be compressed. So these are like little, very small billiard balls, very hard, very bouncy, um, stick together slightly, and their kinetic energy defines their temperature. Or in other words, their temperature, um, the temperature that a substance is at, will affect the kinetic energy of the particles. Okay, so let's have a look at solids. We're going to look at these three things of all the three states of matter, their shape, their volume, and their compressibility. Okay, um, the uh, the shape of a solid. Well, they the point about their shape is that they retain their shape. Okay, why do they retain their shape? Well, that's because the particles, although they are moving, okay, particles are always moving. Um, although they're moving, they're being held together in fixed positions, okay, so these particles are in fixed positions in something called a lattice here, okay, positions, this is a lattice, this kind of grid arrangement, and because they can't move around, part, uh, solids will retain their shape, so these forces of attraction between the particles are holding the particles in this lattice. Uh, their volume, they'll, their volume will basically stay the same, uh, that is to say, um, they won't just suddenly expand or contract by themselves. This might make a bit more sense when we uh, when we look at gases later on. Um, it's a little bit difficult to kind of explain in terms of solids alone. And compressibility, well, if the particles can't be compressed, and if they're right next to one another in the lattice, then solids can't be compressed either. Okay, let's move on to the next state of matter or the next phase, as some people call them, and this is the liquid phase. Okay, looking at the shape of um, uh, the uh, shape of substances, well, they'll take up the shape of the container that they're put in. Okay, they won't necessarily fill the container. Okay, so if I had a bigger container for this liquid, this liquid isn't just going to fill it, but it will take up the shape of it. Okay, and that's because the particles, although they're still being held by the forces of attraction, so the forces of attraction are still there, okay, because the particles have got a bit more energy, it's as if these forces of attraction are weaker, and so the particles are able to move around freely. So their volume won't change, but they'll, uh, um, they, they will take up the shape of the container that they're in. Okay? Um, it's, I suppose, uh, it's easy to think of these things as having weaker forces of attraction than solids. And that's an explanation you often see. And it won't often cost you marks, but it's better, it's more accurate to think of these forces of being, as being just as strong as they were before. But because the particles are now moving faster, because bear in mind a liquid will be hotter than a solid because the solid must have melted to form it, okay? Because the particles are moving faster, 
the forces of attraction have less of an effect on them. Compressibility, this is virtually zero. So it's about, you can't really compress a liquid, okay? It looks like there's little spaces in between the particles, but they're negligible, really. The fact is the particles can move around, but they're still very close together. So you can't compress a liquid, or hardly at all. Okay, and moving on to the final one, gases. Now here's where the volume, hopefully, the volume bit will seem a bit more relevant and start to make sense about the others. Uh, gases will take on the shape of the container that they're put in, and their volume depends on the size of the container. So if I suddenly made this gases container bigger, then the volume of this substance would expand. It would fill the container. So not only do they take on the shape of the container, but they actually fill it. Why is that? Well, because the forces of attraction that there are between particles are virtually non-existent now. In actual fact, the forces of attraction are still just as strong, but the particles are moving about, about so quickly and at such great distances from one another that these forces have virtually no effect. This diagram looks like the particles are very, very far apart, so the volume is going to be much bigger than a solid and liquid. In actual fact, this diagram doesn't really do the uh, doesn't really do the scale any sort of justice. In actual fact, these particles would be very, very far apart indeed in most gases at normal temperatures. Okay, this is a gas that has actually been compressed quite a lot. The particles are quite close together, even if they're much, much further apart than they were in the solid and liquid phase. Okay, are they compressible? Of course they are, because you can push the particles much closer together. So they'll take up the shape of the container, they'll fill the container, and their volume will be much bigger than solids and liquids because the particles are much further apart. Um, some people say there's no forces of attraction here. As we've said before, the forces of attraction never actually change. It's just how much of them the particles experience. Okay, So when these particles are moving much faster, they notice those forces much less. I'm just going to finish off with a fourth slide because people invariably ask about this fourth state of matter um, which since I was at school um, believe it or not um, you probably do because you probably think I'm extremely old but um, this has sort of gained currency since then um, and plasma is now recognized as a fourth state of matter this is a very much like a gas but it's with, with particles that are ionized so this is why this diagram shows them as positive and negative charges. Actually very interesting um, phase, the plasma, um, but we don't need to know anything about it for waste. So that's all I'm going to say about it for now. Okay, um, that is about it for this film. The next one to watch is about phase changes or changes of state, I believe. Okay, so that's the one to move on to next.